How's it going, everybody? Can you guys tell I'm loving the weather? <sighs> so listen to that. I want to share a little bit of my uh, my experience with you guys where I live. Listen to that. It's great. It makes the winters worth it. Anyhow, I wanted to uh, share this package of fine maku fresh broccoli. No, I'm just kidding, Brad. This package, I actually didn't know this was coming. Um, and then it just showed up here. It's from a good friend of the channel, uh, Cameron Hamer. Cameron, he sends me things once in a while. Cameron, you're a good fella. And uh, I appreciate your help and support of the channel. I appreciate everybody that hangs out here. You know, it's, uh, it's just neat to have so many people that enjoy what I do. And uh, it makes turning the camera on easy. Uh, I, I really enjoy this. Anyhow, I don't know what this is, friends. So I'm gonna carefully, I'm gonna carefully cut this open. Oh, traffic coming. I actually gotta ship a saw this week and I think I might ship it in this very same box. Oh, traffic. Oh, uh, I'm an F-250 Super Duty. <laughs> I'm saying that, friends, because that's what everybody drives here. Like, that is probably... The, an F-250 Super Duty is the most common truck in my neck of the woods. Or an F-350. Single rear wheel. That's what, that's what the farmers drive around here. You see the occasional Chevy in that, but... You guys can tell I got trucks on the brain lately. I've been looking at trucks. I'm gonna find the right uh, the right family slash wood hauler. Anyhow, <laughs> now I want to show you guys this, and I might pause yet because this is gonna take a while. But uh, Cameron has adopted uh, an, a really good style of packing. And that style is, friends, if you're shipping a saw and you don't want anything to happen to it, you do that. Cameron puts the saw in a bag, usually. This, he's done this to me before, and it's super funny. He puts the saw in a bag, and he actually spray foams it in. Now, it takes a long time to unpackage, but you know, you know that this saw... It's going to be perfect. Where's my, where's my garbage bin? Oh, it's right there. Let's get that garbage bin, friends. Now, people ask me, why don't, why don't you lift your wood weasel? Well, friends, I got the, uh, I got the short end seam and, uh, I have a hard time climbing in and out of this here fine machine. This thing's tall, really tall. Now, I know what you guys are thinking. You're like, did I see that? Does the Tin Man wear socks and Crocs? <laughs> no. <laughs> Only a weirdo would do that. A man with no style would never wear socks and Crocs. And, uh, you guys can tell I'm in a good mood today. I just am. I'm actually a little hyper today. Lots of, lots of energy. Lots of wind in the old sails. Anyways, this truck's really tall stock, like the back of it. You guys can see it's waist height for me, so. I like a lifted truck. They look cool. They're good in the winter. But the problem is I got such stubby legs that I can't climb in and out. Okay, so. <laughs> this is the best packing method I've experienced. I've had a lot of saws come here. Uh, you could drop this thing down a flight of stairs and it's not going to get damaged. I bet money on that. Ugh. Ugh. I just punched myself in the chest there. There was a lot of interest in the Pioneer parts 
Um, if you guys are interested, maybe I'll do a little Pioneer video on the back of the truck. I have... I'd like to show those parts I got. They're actually neat. They're all in the factory. They're all packed factory, okay? They're in factory containers, the little parts trays, and they're all the way they were. Um, I don't know what this is, friends. I really don't. But yeah, if you guys are interested... Um, might be, might be a cool video. I have some, uh, I have some NOS, uh, uh, cylinders for Pioneers in there. Might be something of interest. Okay, friends, I'm going to pause you guys here. I can't. <laughs> this thing's stuck. Well done, Cameron. Cameron makes me laugh when he ships me stuff. Sometimes it's in, like, a crate that he built. Sometimes it's foamed. It's just fun. Give me a second here, friends. Okay, I just cut the side of the box off. Let's pull this out. I don't know what this is. He put a little card in there. And I thought the card might give away what this is. Ooh. That's an interesting full rappy daffy. Any guesses? I'm sure a lot of you are yelling at the screen right now. You know what that is. That's a pretty distinctive wrap bar, isn't it? That mount might give it away. Again though, friends, I don't know. So, okay. <laughs> oh. You meet the nicest people on the internet. It, oh, ho, ho, I've never even played. Wow. Okay, uh, Unicorn Saw, always wanted one. Never tried one, never seen one. Cameron, dude, seriously, seriously, oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh. Wow. dude, dude, seriously, friends, you know what this is? Here, I'll bring it up close. Still, 056 Magnum 2. Wow. I can't even... I don't even know what to say. I'm going to read this card. I, wow. <laughs> Cameron. Body. Wow. <laughs> Let's read the card because usually he writes me a funny letter. <sighs> Sorry about the still. Old saws are what you find. <laughs> Sorry about the still. Needs a bottom end bearing. So I've been told. Never started it. Good luck, Cameron. <laughs> Thank you, buddy. Oh. So what do you guys think? Should we try and start this thing? Have a little listen to her? Let's bolt the uh, wrap on and wipe her off and then uh, let's, let's ponder it friends. Should we try and start this? Give me a second. I'm going to put the wrap on. Okay. And I could not share this with you guys. Now I just use mix gas. To wipe saws down and like look how clean this thing is already this thing uh it's missing the kill switch that don't matter we can kill it with the choke right anyways look how nice this thing's gonna be this is wow cameron seriously buddy i have like, thank you. I have never seen one of these for sale here. This is probably the only 056 Magnum or Magnum 2 in my area. Probably. I've never seen one. Never seen one for sale. Now, I don't know much about these. I know this is a big saw. I think this is... is but this, this is 90 to 100 cc's, if I remember correctly. Um... 
these were legendary these were big nasty uh, very powerful saws I, I know that i've heard a lot of guys say that you know still guys that run that ran stills in the old days they if you're cutting big timber and this is before the you know the 660 the 066 the 064 this is previous to that okay i think this thing needs a clutch bearing i'm just looking it over friends i think i'm going to try to start this thing just trying to see what I can see. And again, I've never worked on one of these, so. Um, oh, okay, I see. Very simple to work on. There's two screws here. I like working outside. It's not always the best, but let's, let's play with this. Let's... So friends, I was going to, what I'm gonna do, probably the next video you see, or next couple of videos, um, I finished running the, the 372 that we built. You guys have seen that saw, you know, it's a high exhaust roof, long blowdown, long intake timing. I learned something on that saw friends. Uh, a 372 will run good with 160 plus intake timing. That one runs good. It starts good. It idles good. It is hard on fuel though, which isn't really what I was after, but I'll take it right. Uh, I could, I could hand that saw to most people and I think they would enjoy it. It could have more power though. Um, and, and I knew that going into it. But like I said, I was throwing, I threw together some random parts and uh, ended up with that combo. And I thought, you know what? Let's see. All I'm doing with the 372s is I'm gonna play around with different builds and f see, see if I can get one that feels good to me or is close. When I get one that I think is strong, I'm gonna send it to Bucking. Uh, that 2005 that we tore down, that's going to be Bucket's saw. Um, he wanted he wanted uh, a saw that year, and I just happen to have one. And that saw is clean. So, and I'm like that, friends. You know, I have a lot of saws. I'm probably going to get to the point one of these days that I'm going to start, you know, thinning the pile a bit. Keep the ones I like or the ones I want to work on. But, uh. Yeah, he wanted a 2005. So that bottom end is sitting ready to go. And uh, I'll use I'll use the 371 that we built as kind of a test bed for cylinders. And uh, I might even put that cylinder we just did on my 365. That 365 is the first saw I ever ported on the channel. And uh, I've been running it since. I've been running that saw for many years now ported and modded and stock um i wouldn't mind giving it some more juice but i'm kind of sentimental about that top end because again that was the first one i ever ported on the channel so be neat to look at it though but uh so coming up we're gonna do that um, friends, I spent the other night in the shop and I made a pop-up piston. We're going to jack the compression up. I put a pretty substantial pop-up piston in that build now. And I'll go over this when I make a video on it. That, a pop-up isn't always a good thing. Um, in fact, I think sometimes you might lose some power with a pop-up or some efficiency. We can talk about that. I'm just putting this nut on here it's a 10 mil nut if i can these uh these av mounts are kind of squishy but i'm sure and i maybe one of you know in the comments can you still get av mounts for one of these i'd like to go through this saw and make it proper and uh this is a special saw and like i said I've, there's certain saws i just always wanted i i Friends, I'm not going to lie, my best builds are these old style vintage lay down cylinder type saws. If I don't get this in in the next try, I'll, uh, I'll pause you guys so you don't have to bear with me. But you guys know, you guys have all tried to put a nut on, I'm sure, and it doesn't go. But 
these old style lay down saws are always i don't know i seem to i seem to make them really nasty my regular builds are okay they're not always the best i'll admit that um but anyways the 371 i'm gonna put a pop-up in that top end i got it built already we'll uh we'll play with that oh. this thing's not even that heavy and i bet you with a long bar See how it tips down at the back? It feels pretty balanced. Anyhow, friends, but yeah, we're, we're going to put a big nasty pop-up in that cylinder. I'm not even going to touch the upper transfers. We can do that later on. I want to play with that cylinder. What if you ground your exhaust roof too high? That was kind of the premise of that build, you know. I threw that piston in. Uh, I checked the squish the other night, so I have that all written down. But it's just like, what if... What if your exhaust roof is a little high and you want to make more grunt? Well, maybe you can put a pop-up in. So, let's go down that rabbit hole. I'm always learning and growing. I'm always prepared to say I'm wrong or, you know. I was wrong about the intake timing on that saw. I don't know if this thing's going to have spark. Let's just see in real time, friends. Wow, I sure made the back of my truck messy. I love this truck. Spark plug gap looks a little bit big. We'll just let's see what we got here. I'm not even sure. I don't think that's going to work. Let's see. I don't know, friends. What do you guys think? Should we just uh, just give her a go? I'm gonna pause you guys here. I'm gonna clean this up. You guys look. The spark plug's pretty pretty ugly looking. Big gap in it. I'll gap it and clean it. Just give me a second. You guys go. Hit it with a bronze brush. Gapped it. Cleaned it. Now. I know these have the same ignition as the big Dolmar. I gotta put that thing in the wood too. I need to get into some bigger wood here, friends. So I can actually work these saws. But uh, we'll figure that out one of these days. But uh, these have the same ignition as that big Dolmar we were working on. So we kind of know, don't we, that if we did have to do that repair with the ignition chip, let's look under here. I don't know anything about this saw, friends, at all. Looks like a big old Tilly. Big old Tilly. Air filter's plugged. Well, let's just... Let's give this thing a prime. I'm sure I got my priming tool around here. Let's just give this thing a little prime ski. Because uh, pulling this thing over, this thing's got... Whew, compression for days and days. There we go. Okay, all I'll do... Give it a healthy squeeze. Okay. Now, I'm gonna try and pull this thing over. And I'm probably not even gonna choke it. I'll just try and fire it. Okay. Here we go. Now again, this thing has no kill switch, so I'm gonna put it on fast idle. Wow, does this thing have thump? <laughs> You never know, friends. You don't. Let's give her another shot. Sometimes you gotta do this several times. Well, hey, we know the ignition works in this thing, don't we? Let's give her a little squeeze. Let me give her some choke this time. Choke off. Now these old saws, friends, if you're trying to get them to go, it actually helps give them a little, give them a little shot of fuel sometimes, a little trigger while you're pulling them over.
Okay. Oh. <laughs> it runs. Now, this is not definitive, friends, but... Let's get this thing running. I'm going to spray her on here and see if I can make it stall. And, uh... Now, I'm not saying that this thing doesn't need bearings. It's got wicked compression. Seemed to run fine on its side. Again, let's fire this thing back up. say let's put this thing all back together well I, I and again friends this thing may need a bottom end i guess i could pop the seals out and take a peek uh from what i can see here though uh this clutch bearing is kaputski it's it's super loose we can dig into that in another day let's put this side cover back on now this, i'm guessing uh, is this a 404 saw it might be we can figure something out though, can't we? I could just change the sprocket, couldn't I? Yes, I could. Wow. Cameron, seriously, buddy. And I, 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 I don't, I can't put it into words. What, you know, people like Cameron, your support for this channel. I, I just, you guys make this channel what it is. And, um, I just, Stuff like this, I would never have on the channel because it's like, I don't have access to stuff like this. And, uh, I just, Cameron, I just want to say thank you. This is seriously a saw that I've always wanted. I've never seen one. Never run one. And it's actually funny. This cylinder is like that, if I remember correctly. Yeah, it lays back. Uh, like the new saws do. This is an uppy downy cylinder, but it's pitched back. Kind of interesting, isn't it? This thing's crazy. Let's fire it up one more time. What a beautiful night out. This would be a good night to do some falling, wouldn't it? This I cut. I cut when the weather's like this. No wind. No chance of wind. This thing runs like a Swiss watch. Ready? <laughs> now that I say that. Oh, hey friends. I had the choke on. I bet you I just flooded this thing. I hear something I hear like a whirl so what I'm gonna do with this saw before I rip it down or tear it apart uh, let's spend a, let's spend an evening at the bench and let's give this thing a carb kit check out the fuel line I'd like to take this clutch off I'll run the saw without a clutch if the whirl goes away I know it's just that loose clutch bearing um, I'm not I'll have to do some research, friends. I'm not sure what is available for this saw anymore. We'll, we'll find something though, right? We always do. Sometimes you can find a bigger bearing, and I've done this before, that fits on the clutch. I'll actually put the clutch in my, or fits on the crank. I'll put my clutch in my lathe, and I'll bore it, you know, slightly larger so that I can fit a modern bearing in there. 
But uh, saws like this, as much as you want to top with them, believe me, I want to put a bar on this thing and just go uh, murder some wood with it. But I hear things, it got a little lean there too. So rather than popping this absolutely beautiful, full Rappy Dappy 056 Magnum, Magnum 2. Let's spend some time with it. These old saws are worth it. I'll clean this thing up. And uh, this is probably an old faller saw. It's from Prince Rupert, British Columbia. Seasport Outboard, 25 Cal Bay Road, Prince Rupert. I got a cousin in Prince Rupert and an uncle, actually. Funny story. Never been there. Anyhow, Cameron Hammer. I always call you Cameron Hammer. Cameron Hamer. Thank you, buddy. <laughs> wow. This was like top, top still on the list. Um, top still period for me. And now I have one. It's, uh, it's pretty cool. Anyhow, friends, I'm going to check my emails and let's do question of the week. Give me a second. Actually, question of the day. I always say question of the week, friends, but you guys know what I'm talking about. Question of the day. Give me a second. Today's question of the day comes from Walter Irvin. How's it going, Walter? I saw your email a week or two ago, it seems like, and then it slipped my mind. Uh, friends, it's like that sometimes. Uh, I actually carry a notebook with me all the time, and when something pops in my head channel-wise, I make notes. But once in a while, it slips through, and then, bang, it'll hit me again. Walter has an Echo 670. Now, if you guys remember my How to Port a Chainsaw series, if you haven't seen that, it's in a playlist. Check my playlists out. Since I started this channel, I've been making and adding to playlists. Not every video is in a playlist, but the important ones. When I build a saw, I tend to put it in a playlist. I have a still playlist, 266, stuff like that. Macaulay, um, I put things in playlists. Uh, there's a how to port a chainsaw playlist where I ported an Echo 670 and actually made it into a good running strong power saw actually i would say the equivalent of a of a good 266 walter irvin has a 670 and he wants to know he saw uh my 670 in the how to port a chainsaw series and he noticed that my jets turn all the way and he wanted to know if it was a different carb uh he has plastic jets on there walter if you take your carburetor off sometimes you don't have to even with your carburetor on Take a little pen knife or a, or a sharp, you know, a buck knife or something and score those plastic caps and then pull them off. You might have to take the carburetor off. Sometimes there's a little tab on it and you got to turn the tab to a certain spot and pull it out or just cut them, cut the ends off or, or you'll see. Uh, you got to monkey around in there. Sometimes some people will screw a screw into that plastic cover. All that plastic cover does is it has a tab on it and it will only let you adjust your saw so far. Um, those always tend to fall off on my saws. I don't know what happens, but every saw I have with those, they're, they're missing. They just fall off. <laughs> but Walter, uh, that carburetor on that saw was OEM. Those tabs were already removed when I got the saw. So have a good look at it and you'll see there's little tabs in there and Score them and pull them off or you can even get a pen knife in there and cut that little tab off and you'll get full adjustment or sometimes you have to remove it and underneath those plastic caps are actually regular screws and uh, that's how you do that. Anyhow everybody, thank you for your support. Cameron Hamer, you're a wild man. Thank you buddy. Seriously, it's just awesome. Uh, I really appreciate your support of the channel. Everybody else, thank you for taking the time to email me, uh, we're all super busy in life and time is an important thing and I really appreciate that you guys spend your time here. Keep sending those questions and I'll keep putting them in the videos. I love this segment. I can't see me stopping it anytime soon. It's just a lot of fun. Anyhow, thanks for watching. Take her easy. Later.